we're coming to the point of the show where now we want to bring a new segment to you guys. Yes. Because all of us, even ourselves, Daryl, we sometimes need financial advice. It's the worst economy in the history of the United States is what they say. Things have never been worse <laughs> with inflation and the value of a dollar is like nothing so, right now. This was like $12, guys, in Charlotte, North Carolina for coffee. Um, so we have a friend that's a financial guru. Yeah, he's amazing. You guys are going to love him. And so mm -hmm. we want to bring him on the show. Not for and, like change your whole life. Like, yeah. oh, you know, not the Dave Ramsey segment. This is just a tip. Yeah, this is just a good tip to help you save some money, earn some money this year. And uh, so with that, should we bring him on the show, Mr. Josh Feltz, baby? Yeah. Josh, do you have some advice for us on how to make the most of our financial year? Absolutely. Well, first, I need you to make sure every single day you save that $5, and instead of getting coffee, instead of being energized, you start your day off miserable, but you got five extra dollars in your pocket. You're saying that that is like, that's not really great advice, that you should enjoy, if you need coffee to start your work day, Get a cup of coffee. Yeah. $5 is not going to make or break you. And if it does, that's a really, really bad position to be in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So yeah. now we know we can drink the coffee. Uh, so now it's a, it's a, you know, we have the rest of the year to look forward to. We have our caffeine. What's another piece of advice that you would do if you had, uh, what, what do you say, $1,000 right now? You have $1,000 right now. What would you do with it to put it to work for you? So if you only have $1,000 sitting in a bank account and that's all you have, my advice would be leave that money there and go find a way to generate more income. You know, there's two things that you need to consider. Number one, there is always a possibility of there being a rainy day or in even taking it a step further, a disastrous day. You never know when someone's going to pass away a major storm could roll into the city. Like I grew up in Alabama, we had tornadoes and hurricanes all the time. Like there's always potential for there to be some type of rainy day. So if you only have $1,000, my advice is even if you could grow at 50% for the year, that's only $500 additional that you would have. So how then can you go and make more money? There are tons of opportunities to market stuff. Like with Finance Pro, we have ways for you to come in, share opportunities or share different avenues with people and make money without having to invest. Until you get to that around five to $10,000 extra money to really start beginning to grow your money, my advice always is, is pure sweat equity, right? And if you don't know what sweat equity is, I'll make it very simple for you. It is your effort making you money. And there's so many ways to make money. Like, dude, we have so many people making money with us in the finance pro community without having to invest a penny. Now, I'm also a really big advocate of investing and in compounding your money. Albert Einstein says compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world, right? One, he's a pretty smart guy, but then to put it into that picture of being the eighth wonder of the world, he had to understand something that most people don't, right? And that's the power of multiplication versus only addition, right? And I think that's where you can really get into wealth. If you start to make more money, then you have more money to multiply. Because if you only got a little bit to multiply, is it better to do it than not? Yes. But how far is it really going to take you? And if you're looking to get to wealth, you need to have a practical plan rather than just being hopeful and wishful for money just arriving at your doorstep. It's a lot more practical than just hopeful. Coffee every day. Yeah. <laughs> just say your five bucks, man. Final question. <laughs> this is like, you know, those segments where they, where they say they want to spend money on something and then the finance guy says yes or no. Okay. There's a cruise coming up. It's seven days and it's $4,200, but I get a slide in my room. Worth it? It depends on how much you like slides. <laughs> 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 how much is the slide worth to you? It, I mean, it, my, my thing is I tell people like, does it make sense? Would spending this money now and going on this trip, you know, make the start of your year amazing? And do you have the financial capacity to do it? If you have tons of money laying around, go enjoy yourself. But if you could put that $4,200 to work for you, and really start grinding this year and maybe go on a trip this summer because you have a lot more now to use or you've just now built more income, that specific amount of money is not near as valuable as it was six months prior being in today.
You know, so I think it just, again, it's all about practicality and really seeing where you're at and the best way to use what you have financially as well as effort-wise with your personal effort that you can go in and put in to make money now. Nice to chat with you, man. Thanks for hanging. Yeah, thanks for Absolutely. Coming. Let's go. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> this is so great. I can't believe I'm going to be rich finally. Yeah, thanks for coming on, Josh. We appreciate it.